Um, the reason I thought that this was a really worthwhile topic is because, uh, one, I mentor a number of people and uh, their biggest question on their mind is, you know, I've been making all these contributions, I've been working long hours, uh, I think I deserve a promotion, but, you know, I don't know what to do. Like, I walked up to my boss and I said, hey, I want a promotion. And they were like, uh, okay, let me think about it. So what can I do? And I had a couple um, folks that I coached most recently where I gave them a recipe. And I said, this is what you need to do to get promoted. And they were really good at following that recipe, so they ended up getting promoted, and I want to share that with you. Um, but the key takeaway that I want you to understand is you actually have to do some preparation. And a lot of that preparation is kind of what Swathi has already talked about, as well as Quinton has talked about, is thinking about your contributions. But I'm going to walk you through that process as well. So we're going to start by talking about why it is that people actually get promoted. Like I said, how do you prepare for a promotion? And then there's always that time in your life, you know, maybe six months, one year, where you're just not feeling up to it. And maybe you've skipped out, you've taken some vacation, or you were learning and you just didn't perform, right? And a lot of times people come to me and they say, you know, I didn't have the best review. Am I like really legitimately going to go and ask for a promotion? Uh, so we'll talk about how to deal with some of that. And then what to do if you do end up getting passed. Right? I'm not telling you that what I'm going to give you today is a secret sauce for 100% success. You know, it'll probably work 80-90% of the time, but we'll also talk about what happens if you do end up getting passed and how you can still you know, make progress. And the final thing I'll mention is, you know, I want you to stick around for this talk, but I certainly want you to stick around for the breakout session. Uh, for us at Femgineer, when we do these forums, the breakout session are those breakthrough moments where you get to get into groups, you get to practice what you've learned in this talk, and you get to get some nurturing uh, and feedback from your peers, right? You're not gonna get this in your own company, like you're really gonna walk up to somebody and be like, hey, how do I get promoted here, right? <laughs> you, you might not want to, so use this environment to do that. Stick around for the breakout sessions and, um, and, and use that as a chance to talk to your peers. All right, so the first is, and I think Swathi did a really great job setting this up, uh, is recognizing the excellence in effort, right? So a lot of times people get promoted because their company, their boss, their team has recognized that they've done something awesome and that they deserve to be rewarded for this. And so that's one way that a lot of people get promoted. But it just so happens that you might be in a company, a small company, a startup, or you know, even a large company where you might not have a process in place yet, right? If you look around the room, uh, and you think about you know, who got promoted here recently, there might not be anybody. This doesn't mean that you can't get promoted or that you can't ask for one. It means that you now have to sort of step up and say, hey, this is important, people need to be recognized. And you have to take a little bit of, uh, of a risk in this case, like Quentin said, and have some level of discomfort, um, but make sure a process does get put in place and that you, know, you do speak up. The other is that you might be in a big company where there is a lot of process and there's some level of hierarchy, right? A lot of times um, people I talk to say, I don't know, like, seems like I have to talk to 20 people before I can get promoted. That might be the case, but you know, hey, 20 people can be really instrumental in your career getting to the next level, right? So one woman that I work with, Karen Catlin, uh, was a VP of Adobe. And what Karen taught me was that at Adobe, uh, in order to get promoted to a senior level position or even an executive level position, it wasn't just about your peers or your teammates or even your you know, department. It was other people knowing about you because you're most likely being recruited or, or uh, elevated to a position where you're gonna be doing some cross-functional work. And so if people don't really know about you or know about your contributions, then they're not really gonna wanna vouch for you. So it was really important that people kind of had some visibility into what you were doing. The second thing she said, which I thought was really amazing, was that it's not enough to be an individual contributor. So people just couldn't sit there and write code all day and be like, look at this amazing product I built. They actually also had to be responsible or take some initiative to help others on their team out, possibly even bring new hires up to speed, but they had shown some initiative beyond just their day-to-day -day work. Right? That shows leadership, that shows caring, shows that you also care about your, your colleagues and you know, building a good culture. 
And so people had to know that in order to get promoted. They couldn't just follow a simple recipe. They needed to you know, do some outside work. So whatever company you're in, make sure you know what that process is, as well as are there other folks in there that need to vouch for you. Now, the other thing I'm going to mention about this is a lot of times people are interviewing at new jobs um, and they always ask me, like, how do I know? How do I know this company you know, promotes people? Well, this is the time to ask them, right? The interview isn't just about you sitting there and answering questions. It's the time to put the folks on the other side in a little bit of a hot seat and to ask questions like, who did you last promote? And why? And when? Right? And if they're scratching their heads, might not be the right environment for you to be in, right? So think about how you're evaluating companies, even if you're deciding to transition, um, you know, not, not just the ones that you're working for today. So we've given you some great examples, uh, two, three folks up here who have gotten promoted. So we know it's possible, right? You might be early in your career, or you might have been around for a while and might have not gotten one yet, but I wanted to showcase these people first to show you that people do definitely get promoted and they get promoted in a lot of different environments, in a big company, in a startup as well. And that you can also get promoted. So we talked a little bit about this with the examples here of why people get promoted, but I want to reiterate the point again. Right, you're already performing the role. I think Swathi was a great example of this, so thank you Swathi for setting me up, and uh, showing that she was already doing the work. She had already stepped up, her manager left, she became the manager, and you know it was kind of like a little bit of a no-brainer. They still made her go through a little bit of the process, but she was performing the role in a way that people saw that she was credible. And so I want you to think about this. Are you already performing the role that you ultimately want, whether that's a team lead or even if an individual contributor or an architect or whatever it is, right? If you're already performing it, then you know chances are the promotion is going to be a slam dunk. The other is if a company has a new need, which once again Swathi seems to fit the bill for, right? If they have a new need, whether it's a new business unit, whether they're just growing or somebody leaves, if there's a new need, it's an opportune time if you think you're capable to actually speak up and say, hey, this looks like an opportunity that I'd like to participate in, right? Whether or not you might have a plethora of experiences that you've done before that fit you know, perfectly into this new need is a different uh, conversation. But the key is, you know, company has a need, do you think you can do some of it? Are you capable? Can you learn as you're going? But the other thing is you need to understand what that new need is. And then I think everyone here has mentioned that they actually spoke up and asked for it, right? I think a lot of times when I talk to people, they say, well, you know, I'm just kind of hoping that, uh, like, I've been here for five years, and I haven't gotten a promotion, so I think, I think at some point somebody will, like, see my efforts. And the truth is people will see your efforts, but they won't always necessarily equate that to you deserving a promotion. So you are your best advocate and you're the one that has to speak up and ask for it. And I know that's scary, so I'll explain how you can do that in a way that's going to be a little less scary for you. But the key is to, you know, put it out there that you do want this. So let's talk about how you're actually going to prepare, whether or not you're performing the job or you want to you want the you know new position. So you can, you can actually prepare for it if you're questioning if that's possible or not. And the way to do that is to not do everything, right? I think a lot of times people feel like, oh, in order to do this like next level, whether it's a team lead or whether it's even like an architect, I need to know everything, right? I need to know like full stack development, I need to know everybody, and I, I just have to like ramp up. And the truth is you actually don't need to know everything. The other thing is, it's not about the hours, right? A lot of times people are like, oh, I need to be working harder and longer, and then people will understand that I'm truly committed and that I deserve the promotion. But it's actually not about the hours as well. It's really about showing results. And I think both Quinton and Swathi illustrated that, right? And by showing results, it means what are the contributions that you have made that have resulted in something positive, right? And I'll explain what that is in, in more detail. 
Uh, but the other key is that you're talking about your accomplishments. So it's really easy a lot of times to be like, oh, you know, me and my like five teammates, we got together and we did this really cool project and like the customers were happy afterwards. Well, that's great. But they're gonna promote you and your five teammates, right? They're gonna promote one person, possibly two. So you have gotta think about what your specific accomplishments were. What were your contributions? And if you can't, then you've gotta sit down with paper and pen and kind of highlight what it is that you did. And if you didn't do those, would the same results have happened, right? So that you can draw a clear path back from what it is that you know, the results were to what your specific contributions were. So I know a lot of people don't do this because they're like, oh, I don't know if I should talk about this, or like, I only did like this one piece. It doesn't matter how big the piece is, right? It doesn't matter if it was like, you did the whole thing or you did like 1%, make sure you know what your contribution was. And just own up to that. So if you're still wondering what this means, right? It's doing things like this, saying that you delivered something on time or on budget. It's making improvements to the overall quality or process of whatever the product is or whatever the team is doing. It's even doing things like reducing waste, right? If you've brought down costs, if there's fewer bugs in the product because you did something like test-driven development, then you need to talk about those. Or, like in the case of you know, Swathi, you led a team, you led a project, right? And if you weren't told to do that, and you took that upon yourself, it's a great time to highlight it. So take stock of what your accomplishments are in this kind of framework. Let's also talk about what if you want to take on a new role, right? Because I think a lot of times a promotion isn't just about you doing what it is that you might have already been doing, but you might actually want to level up in your career, right? You might want to go from being that individual contributor to a team lead like uh, like Winton explain. So the first thing I tell people is, if it's a new role, make sure it's one that you want, right? A lot of times people are like, oh, I think it'd be so great to be a team lead. And then when you tell them, okay, you're gonna be responsible for managing five to 10 people, like, oh, I, I don't wanna manage people. I don't wanna be responsible for other people's careers, right? Or if it's something like transitioning from a technical role to product management or something else, and they don't realize how much um, or how less code they're going to be writing. Uh, and that's a little bit scary for them. They're like, oh, I don't know if that's what I want to do, right? So make sure whatever it is that you're getting ready to pitch as the role that you want is actually one that you want. And get some validation from your peers. Chances are, like Swathi uh, gave the example, you know, if they end up interviewing you, right, you're going to need them to vouch for you. So get some feedback from those people and not only you know, the people that are on your immediate team, but people that are also in other departments, right? Because depending on what the promotion is, you might be working across, you might be working with marketing or product or sales or customer support. So if you did make a, a major contribution that impacted those kinds of departments, make sure you get those folks to give you some feedback. You know, even take down quotes and testimonials and, and ask them, hey, would you be comfortable vouching for me? Right? This is another thing you have to get comfortable with is asking people to support you or be champions for you. Right? So would you be open to saying that I did this work and that you were happy with it? So the next is you've got to use their feedback. Right? You've got to collect this feedback and actually use it to get the promotion that you want. And what that looks like is, and this is where it gets a little bit scary, is this is the point where you walk up to the first decision maker, and this person might be your boss, your supervisor, and it's not getting in there and saying like, hey, give me a promotion. Uh, the first up is saying, hey, you know, I'd really like to talk to you. And if they're like, what is this regarding? Then if you've already been in conversations about a promotion, then it's saying, hey, I'd really like to take about 30 minutes of your time to explore this topic we've talked about before, you know, the promotion that I want. And so get them to sit down with you, get them to commit that time to, to being with you. And this is the time where you don't go in initially and say, hey, I want this promotion, but instead, kind of like you did with your peers, you sit down and say, have you been happy with the work that I've done? You know, the results that I've shown on this project, would you agree that, you know, those are the results that I've contributed to? 
And do you think that I'm actually doing excellent work, right? Things that you might not have expected of me. So you want to get some feedback from them. And then, you know, depending on what they say, that's when you want to go in for the ask. And the thing about the ask is you've got to be super clear, right? And I think Swathi explained this and Quinn explains as well is be clear about what it is that you want. If you want more money, right, more than a 30% raise, ask for that. If you want a specific role, ask for that. Too often I see people that get up to the point where they showcase their accomplishments, they have their feedback, and then they're kind of like, um, it would be really great if I could like maybe possibly work on this like new project. Uh, maybe it's in mobile, right? What does that mean? Like, okay, so they kind of want to work on it. It doesn't show that you're super interested, that you're passionate about it, that you want to take the reins and lead it. And if you muddle the message, then they're not going to be able to give you what you want, right? So don't feel like you're being bitchy or aggressive or overly confident. You're not. You're being clear in what you want and what you need. Now, I know that when you do this, right, there's some level of risk that your boss or whomever is promoting you is going to take, right? Their ass is on the line. And so given that, you have to, in this sort of sales process, think about what they're going to object to, right? And a lot of times they might say something like, well, we've got to put you through an interview cycle, right? We've got our process in place and you're going to have to go through that. Okay, great. You know, ask them what is involved in that. Or they might say something like, I don't know, you, you, it doesn't look like you've been a lead before. You know, how do we know you're capable? So, you know, you take that objection, right? But this is the time to kind of collect the objections and think about it. It's not the time to be like, oh my God, I'm not gonna get this promotion. It's the time to hear them out, listen to what they have to say and say, okay, I'm gonna think about this. I understand your concerns, come back to you, and then, you know, tell you what I think. So don't feel like it's all over at this point. But realize that if you can address those objections, you're mitigating risk for them, right? Ultimately, if you make your boss look good, then you know they're gonna be happy and they're gonna wanna promote you. So make the decision easy by understanding what their risk factor is or what their concerns are. So the way to think about the objections is to go back and to think about stories on why you're capable. So I was talking to uh, Courtney here before uh, who's actually worked for a number of nonprofits and has been a self-taught developer. And what Courtney told me was that she was working on a side project for Code Montage, uh, which does open source development. And you can pick your own projects. And she did some projects on Code Montage. And so when she went to interview for a job at Dev Bootcamp, you know, she didn't have formal experience. But she showed her project to them and got the job, right? So you can show some other examples of work that you've done doesn't always have to be exactly the same, right? So think about that. A few years ago, I, in fact, had um, a gal that I met who said, you know, I want to be a user research person. Uh, I don't know how to get this position. So I asked her what she did in the past. And she said, oh, I was the head waitress uh, at a restaurant. And I had to work Friday, Saturday nights, which are like the worst nights, you all know. Uh, and I had to deal with like 100 customers, keep them really happy. I got the most tips. I kept all the customers satisfied, uh, and I said, that sounds like a great story, and I think that as a user researcher who has to like deal with customers, hear them out, and translate that to a product or a service, it seems like you're already doing that. And she said, would people want to hear that I'm a waitress? And I said, just try it out, see what happens, right? Well, she ended up getting the job, right? People still related to that story, and even though she didn't have formal background in being a user researcher, she was able to promote herself to getting what she wanted. So, Think back to some stories and how some of those skills can be translatable. It doesn't always have to be you're performing this before, therefore you're going to perform it again. So the final couple of things I want to conclude on are, you know, like I said, there's always that time where you might not have had the best performance. And it could have been for a number of reasons. You might have been ramping up, you might have been junior, uh, you might have just had a bad six month period, right? Who knows? So you might have had a bad performance review or one that didn't result in a promotion. That's not always a bad thing. And here's why. You wanna be able to show that you made progress over time. 
So even if six months ago you didn't do well, right, but since then you've been at it, you've been performing, you've made contributions, you've helped your team out, you've trained other folks, right, you might have done a number of things, you can show that over time. I actually had a recent mentee who had this exact position. Six months ago, he, you know, his boss was like, eh, your work is really sloppy, you know, we don't know if you're fit to work at the startup. And he really took that to heart, um, hired me to be his mentor and kind of coached him. And he started to make a lot of progress and he really took to heart what they had said. And he slowly, you know, worked with one of the um, architects there, did a better job in terms of quality and keeping track of what he was doing, was really results focused. And when, he, when it was time to ask for that promotion, he said, look, I know six months ago I had this bad review, but I think, you know, in the last six months, here are the things that I've done. Would you agree that this is a good job? And they were like, yeah, totally. You know, tell us where to, how to approve of this, right? So, so you can make it happen, but like I said, you've got to get a little bit of buy-in. You've still got to think about the accomplishments you've made since that bad time. Now, like I said, after saying all this, you know, you might come back to me in a month, six months, whatever, and say, you know, I tried all your tips and they didn't work. I still managed to get past that for promotion. I'm not saying this is not gonna happen, right? So here's the, th the deal. Kind of like Quinton mentioned, there are some environments that just aren't conducive to, you know, giving you a promotion. A lot of times they might not have a process, they might not just be the right culture for you to be in, and they're not valuing your contributions. So you do have to make a decision that, you know, it's time to quit, it's time to look for something else. So don't feel like you have to get stuck and keep, you know, pushing for this. If you don't see it after six months, a year, or whatever a normal, you know, promotion cycle would be, then think about, okay, what have I done here that I can go somewhere else and make a better contribution and actually be, you know, valued for those contributions. So think about the environment that you're in. It's not always that you're not performing. A lot of times people will make you feel like you're not performing, but if you take stock of what you've done, then you'll have a more objective scale, right? If you look at the results. And then the other is timing. You know, there are, I mean, I think right now 2008 is, is over, <laughs> it's been over for a while, but there are times where there are dips in the economy for whatever reason, people are tightening their belts and they're just not ready to give you that promotion that you deserve, right? So it's still worth having that conversation and understanding whether, you know, they would be willing to once things improved. So a lot of times timing can be a factor and in some big companies, you know, they do have those criteria of, oh, it's gotta be a year or six months or on a particular quarter. So figure out what the timing is and at that point, you know, prepare at least a month in advance to ask for it, right? So don't feel like you can't, just understand what the timing is. All right, so hopefully this has given you a little bit of a recipe. Uh, and like I said, we talked about why people get promoted. I think we've given you some great examples here with Swathi and Quinton and Deirdre that people do indeed get promoted. They get it because they're already performing the job or there's a need in the company and they step up and demonstrate that they have the capability to perform that. But on top of that, they ask for it, right? Then we talked about how do you prepare and I gave you that recipe which you're gonna practice in the breakout session. So the way that you prepare is first, you're gonna take stock of your accomplishments then you're going to get out there and validate that with some of your peers. You're gonna go talk to your boss and uh, make sure that they also give you some validation. If there's any objections, you also get those addressed. And then the final is you're really clear about what it is that you want. And if you've had a checkered pass, that's okay, right? It's looking at what you've done since then, what accomplishments you've made and what contributions you've made. And if you ultimately do get passed up, evaluating whether it's the environment or whether it's timing, and then making your own decision. The you know, piece of advice that I wanna leave you with, if nothing else, is to realize that there are a lot of opportunities. It's not about one particular company you know, painting the scarlet letter on your forehead, right? So if it didn't work at one place, it doesn't mean that there aren't other opportunities. There are so many opportunities at tech and especially being a woman at this time is even great because a lot of them are taking the time to notice and to realize that they need to be aware of us. So, so keep that in mind and don't feel like 
where you are is where you will always be. All right? So before we get into the breakout session, just a couple announcements. Like I said before, if you enjoyed this, this was helpful, and you want to help us come to New York, uh, keep doing these events, then please let us know if you have ideas for companies to sponsor us. Uh, and then if you want to learn more, uh, we've, I've got a book coming out uh, called How to Transform Your Ideas in Software Products. Uh, there's actually a free email course that goes along with it, so you can sign up for this if you'd like. And then if you want to do any of our courses, our online courses, we've got a number of them. We've got one on communication, we've got one on product development. If you've got an idea and you want to validate it, whether you want to pursue it as an entrepreneur or even in a big company, and then if you actually want to build it, we'll also explain how you can build it. It doesn't matter if you're a front end or a back end, uh, don't have any design skills, we'll walk you through the full stack so that you learn how to build end to end. Uh, and then if you want more one-on-one, -on -one, I do offer three mentoring spots uh, every quarter.